sad. Like, I feel like everybody always want to talk about how they want to uplift women. All these fake-ass woke people always want to talk about, oh, uplifting women, feminism, this, this, and that. But it be like the same women that be laughing in the comments when another woman is going through some shit. And it's all the time. And that's to every single woman. Every single. And it's just like, I feel like that shit is whack. What's up, y'all? I hope all is well. So in this video, I want to do some commentary in response to Claudia Jordan having to gather Caitlyn Jenner on X when they <laughs> made a microaggressive comment towards Kamala Harris in regards to her mixed race identity. And I just wanted to do not only some commentary on that situation. And at first, I was going to include it in my live that I did about Kamala Harris and if you have not already watched that video or that live <laughs> please check it out I will have it linked in the description box below so make sure to support the live streams I'm trying to get those popping moving forward but yes I have done a whole live stream about the commentary surrounding Kamala Harris racial identity and how ignorant it has been but anyway, I was going to include the situation as well, but decided not to because I decided to do this in a, in a separate video because I wanted to connect this situation with some of my own um, story times, you could say. And what was my peak trans moment that really made me recognize that this movement was problematic, especially to women, especially. Um, and I want to talk about how that same time period of my life intersects with what peaked me as a mixed woman as well. Um, I didn't always socially identify as mixed. I always knew genetically and ancestrally that I was mixed, um, especially because my grandparents are don't look really black, honestly. Um, so I always knew that, uh, but I socially did not identify as mixed. And so I kind of came to all of these conclusions about not only womanism and the woman's experience my black woman's experience in the world but also recognizing and coming to the conclusion that I need to acknowledge this part of me as a mixed woman as well and my mixed ancestry and I need to grapple with all of that and deal with all of that at the same time <laughs> so it was a very interesting time period in my life and I believe that everything happens for a reason nothing is a mistake and I really feel like those growing pains really made me sh made me more of a whole person today but anyway let's get right into the podcast and again if you have not already checked out my live about Kamala Harris's racial identity I encourage you to do so I should have the time stamps added by the time this video is premiered so I will have that live linked in the description box below make sure to check it out so anyway, let's get into the podcast. So Trump made a tweet where he said, and I went over this in my live as well. He stated, crazy Kamala is saying she's Indian, not black. This is a big deal. Stone cold phony. She uses everybody, including her racial identity. So that was Donald Trump's uh, take on mixed race identity, I guess. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, this character, doubles down on his quote and reposts it on tw uh, or x <laughs> and says hey i thought she always identified as a black woman this woman is such a phony not to mention beyond way too far left for this country then claudia jordan responds back and says what exactly needs to be said and states caitlin sit this one out you really want to go there as much as you have reinvented yourself and wanted grace please hush <laughs> so i loved this classy little clapback read this is exactly the type of energy that i have been looking for from black and mixed women i'm really sick of us kowtowing to these characters and pandering to them changing our language accommodating them in our spaces um uh, always uh giving them special attention whenever we're having a femicide or a uh, domestic violence conversation um I'm just sick of them. Con I'm just sick of them constantly being censored, especially in black spaces, because it's just another way to phallus worship black males and censor their experiences over black women's and never address any real issues. So anyway, um, and just from the little underhanded insider information <laughs> that I have because I pay attention to the blogs and stuff like that, <laughs> I do feel like um Claudia Jordan is getting sick of the bullying the social bullying and the passive passive um 
how do I say this? The the micro passive microaggressions almost in a way from these males, whether it be uh, racially or genetically based on our gender. I think every everybody who has common sense is sick of these characters. Seriously, this this situation directly connects to my peak trans moment that I had back around 2018 through 2020. And that's because generally I used to not really give much thought to the whole um, tease situation. You know, the people who transform and stuff like that. I never gave my perspective really on that because I never really had a strong perspective of it um until I had an incident where an individual was in a space with me where I felt very uncomfortable I actually had this happen to me multiple times so when they say that that's not happening and then they're not people who present like men have all their male parts and their male voice coming into bathrooms and then claiming that they're trans that is a lie it is happening in New York City it is happening they have gender neutral bathrooms they have uh, family stalls, family bathrooms, where you can have men and families in there. It's dangerous AF. I would never take my family in there. I would never take a child in there. Um, I d try to avoid public bathrooms now because of it, especially because I'm in, you know, the Sodom and Gomorrah cesspool that is New York City. Even though I love it, I have to be honest with you, it's a lot of degeneracy that's condoned here, and that's one of the things. But anyway, so I had an experience where I was essentially violated. My personal boundaries were violated. And I had other women, specifically other black women, um, shaming me about the situation and making me out to be the bad guy. And I've briefly spoken about that on my channel, so I'm not going to get too much into that. Um, I will give you guys access soon to some more content that is my perspective on that, that topic and about that whole situation. Um, but anyway... I don't want to give that much perspective on the political or like the conversational aspect between this situation, but I just want to point out that this is a great example of the white male and just male in general, male entitlement that exists not only from these individuals who are um, female impersonating, but also just socially as well. And you know it just has to you just have to think about the level of arrogance and entitlement and as well as feeling that you're morally and social socially superior to somebody or other groups of people to where you are literally beyond a doubt the most privileged group of people on this planet yet you have transitioned to cosplay a minority group that is women you're cos cosplaying as a white woman. You got all of these unearned, actually undeserved titles and examples when you first, you know, did your transforming. Things that average everyday women who are mothers, who are working women, who are, you know, maybe dealing with abusive relationships or even on their own, you know, in less than stellar situations, working two, three jobs and trying to take care of their kids and be a present mental, mentally health, healthy parent. Those women will never get woman of the year awards. Those women will never be on swimsuit magazines or anything. But you had this white man who changed their name, changed the, the K from the the to a c on their name now wants to pretend that they're a woman and we're all supposed to kowtow to to his delusion and his mental illness and his freakitude when he was t touching his daughter's underwear when they were underage it's funny how everybody forgot about that but he thinks he could fix his mouth and talk negatively and and, and try to give his little two cents on kamala harris's racial identity the arrogance and you know where this arrogance comes from specifically from this individual but this applies to all men across the board but this individual because they actually have social power he already knows that he his placement like how he feels about stuff is that what he says goes and he can question and talk about other people so in my opinion i definitely can view and view somebody like Caitlyn Jenner as a morally superior person, especially how they try to do the whole, oh, I'm conservative, but a, a tease thing, but a female impersonating thing. Those people there, there's definitely a psychology and a pathology to those people. <laughs> like with without a reasonable um doubt so i'm i think i do think that it's beyond hypocritical and delusional and entitled for this individual to try to say oh you're switching your races this woman is a phony blah blah blah, blah. if kamala harris quote unquote is a, a phony according to you uh a phony indian or whatever you're trying to say or um, a phony black woman or whatever the point of this tweet was whatever you're trying to say if she was a phony that what are you because they're actually genetic and biological 
uh, um, basis to being a woman. Being a man and a woman is the most basic facts of life. It's y'all are the y'all are the group of people that want to play God and y'all want to control people's reproduction. Y'all want to be able to control how people can stay alive. Y'all want to control um, aid the aging process. Y'all as a group of people are obsessed with controlling natural life and playing God. And that's what's going to be your downfall in the end. Watch. <laughs> because the most basic thing, human reproduction, population, that's where y'all are lacking. And that's why you're trying to scramble and everything else and pretend to be women, live vicariously through your, your daughters and your sisters and your wives like some weirdos. And then you want you want to be the pretty princess and you want to rest in your femininity. And then you wonder why <laughs> you wonder why your birth rate is drying up and the whole country is about to be looking real South American soon. Like uh, it, it, it's ridiculous. And all of these things are self-inflicted. But just <laughs> listen, I'm not going to keep going on, on this tangent, but just the pure narcissistic hypocrisy of you to you be living your life pretending to be a group of people that there's a biological basis to our oppression in our life, what we go through, you're pretending to be that something that's real life proven, but you're calling this, um, black and, and Indian woman, a phony all because you don't know the ins and outs of her racial identity as if you give a shit and it has any bearing and effect on your life anyway. It just, it, it gets really me really mad. It's like, so we're supposed to sit up here and protect your feelings and protect whatever story and delusion you created in your mind and pretend that you're a woman even though a whole woman birthed out two whole daughters for you <coughs> but now you want to want to be the woman hmm i guess you wanted to join the club because you saw how they was popping so you wanted to be a popping bad bitch too i guess that's what happened but um but anyway it's it's so funny that we, they want to gaslight the whole society and we're supposed to all go along with this delusion that we know is not true even though this is one of the major facts of life so we're literally disrespecting life when we call these individual women but y'all as a european culture y'all created this concept of race that y'all heavily enforce and y'all try to hold everybody's head it, it's just so interesting to me and it just shows you really how white men really do truly control this society because no one even gave a shit about this whole cramp you know the transforming situation nobody cared about that until it was starting to look like it was a group of straight white men that were being disadvantaged and most of these men are white because he was with the woman for i mean are straight because he was with women multiple times so i do believe sexuality wise bruce <laughs> bruce liked to bang women that's what i believe he can say that he's a woman who likes to wear dresses that's fine um, but I'm not going to pretend that you are, you can live whatever delusional life you want to live in your, in the comfort of your home though. But it's very interesting that now the whole society has been gaslit to accommodate you, but you can't even be respectful of this woman who's multiracial. Like, it, and it's so funny to me that these people cannot grasp the concept that you have two parents that come from being a mixed person or, and being biracial, that's that is a person having two parents that comes from two different cultures. So because it takes two to tango, the same way you get two genetic contributions from your parents physically, genetically, in your genome, you're also getting that in your household and your culture. So if your mom is one thing, you're going to go inevitably see your grandparents that are Irish or whatever. And then if your dad is Nigerian, you're obviously inevitable going to have at least some connection to Nigeria, whether he was present day to day and around or not. You still have a connection there. That's still half of who you are. You're still probably most likely going to pick up some aspects of the culture eventually, relatively. So I think it's so interesting that these monoracial people cannot ha wrap their head around ha that that is a concept. They cannot ha wrap their head around the concept of mixed race or, or of mixed raceness or biraciality, but they can grasp the concept of so-called transgenderism. You can grab the concept of a man who's proven through his sexuality that he probably is attracted to women so i'm not even getting into the whole um sexuality aspect of this you're taking a man that already has proven that um has already come out and said that he used to touch that he used to sneak and wear and look at his daughter's clothes when they weren't around like a fucking freak y'all can y'all can rationalize all of this it can make sense to you to pretend as an entire society that men are women and fuck up statistics and mess up women's sports and risk women and children being assaulted y'all really willing to put that on the line 
But y'all can't even accommodate mixed people's identity. You can't even fathom that somebody can be biracial and have two different cultures. You can't even bother to respect somebody who's mixed. But we got to respect all these damn pronouns and, and all these, you know, gender delusions of grandeur. It is so annoying to me. Like, like it, it is beyond annoying to me. Like, the fact that we live in a country that so heavily goes out of its way to gaslight and manipulate mixed people into thinking a certain way or viewing the world a certain way. But now they're trying to flip the rug from everybody's feet and now say, oh, wait, by the way, we're we're messing with gender, too. We're messing with biology. We're messing with everything. Yeah, because y'all want to play God. Y'all mess with all the social dynamics. Y'all, y'all fucked up every frontier on the planet. Y'all colonize everywhere. So all y'all... I can now colonize is Mars and reproduction that's it and and I feel like white men as a collective group are having an identity crisis at the moment because there's nothing left to conquer everybody's turning on them their historical behavior is being exposed and now they're scrambling to try to either become a marginalized group or to try to play God and slow down the aging process or the um their birth decrease process <laughs> and try to figure that out so they can become the hero of the situation in, um, in some way. And I just feel like the, the whole tease rights thing that's being pushed it's a huge distraction to distract away from issues that happen to women um women of color in this country but around the world um to to basically socially gaslight everybody about feminism because when this whole trans stuff started to get really popular it was around the time when there was a lot of hatred towards feminism online so i think that there's definitely a correlation um b- between the two and yes i do definitely believe that this is sub tell pro shit you can call me conspiracy theorist theorist or you know whatever i proudly wear my tin foil hat sweetie i have a kiss mark on it <laughs> period after i put on my lip gloss and then i put on my tin foil hat period i definitely think that there's some cointel pro behind this shit because how is all these government boards on board with this all the school system everybody's on board with this nonsense and it's mass hyster- it's mass hysteria gaslighting so now you have mixed women like Kamala Harris and all types of mixed celebrities being attacked from all different angles for our mixed identity or something that people claim that we said or we think or whatever. All this speculation, all these mixed people, all these Afro mixed people specifically, people who are mixed with black, people who are part of the African diaspora, everybody's so all of a sudden attacking us but we're supposed to coddle largely white men who are pretending to be women and we're supposed to accommodate their identity but when historically ever has not only white people collectively i'm not talking about individuals but collectively in this country at least when have they ever accommodated mixed people's identity or been respectful of mixed people's identity or given a shit about the mental health or well-being of mixed people or black people for that regard at all but mixed people are part white a lot of us and they still don't care and, and that's a real historical experience of, of of based oppression and even in 2024 they won't even acknowledge that they won't even do the bare basics they're still struggling to understand biraciality and still arguing over somebody being black or indian as if people don't have two parents two black two parents like if you have two parents why is it hard to understand what being biracial is and hard to understand that this woman is black and indian why is that so such a difficult concept to grasp for people? I really don't understand that. And it's like, clearly, it's possible that y'all can grasp it. And y'all are choosing to not understand on purpose. Because if you can make sense of and, and do make sense of pure military mind games <laughs> and pure boost cocky by believing in all this gender nonsense, it's funny that you still can't wrap your, around, your head around the concept of biraciality. I find that very interesting. Like, they can do all these mental gymnastics to rationalize all this gender nonsense and pronouns and whatnot, but they just cannot fathom or understand mixedness, biraciality, admixture. I mean, it's just a foreign, completely foreign concept. They cannot understand the concept of being multicultural. They can't understand that, but they can understand gender. No, you're choosing to not understand. And that that's really what they showed me in the last few years when I've been peaked. No, y'all choose to not understand out of disrespect because you don't care. But anyway, so just before I wrap this video up, I want to go into my story time and talk about how these concepts have affected my life and how coming to these conclusions and starting to notice these patterns um, affected my perspective. 
So I, like I said, I went through that situation where I had my space violated and I was in an unsafe situation and I confided in a few other, um, black women. Some of them were, um, Caribbean, Caribbean meaning like West Indian, you know, English speaking and Spanish speaking as well. And then some were African too. And so some of them took to it and they understood where I was coming from, but a few of my friends were very angry and very upset with me for being very upset about it and they were very offended <laughs> funny enough they were offended at which the way I expressed myself and my how that kind of radicalized me against this movement and how I started to be vocal about not supporting it um there were a few haters that of course they did not take my side they gaslit me on it um, we try, they tried to have interventions with me where they even tried to talk to me about it and claimed that I've probably offended so many trans people because there's no way that I could even know if somebody is trans because there's just so many trans people that I wouldn't even know. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> like, like I grew up in New York City. You think I've never seen like a transvestite like they used to call it like I and I don't use that word, but come on now. Like, <laughs> like that's what they used to call them back in the day. Like we, we see this all the time in New York. So it's not a foreign concept to me, but do I want to see them in the, did I ever see them in the bathroom? Was this ever a discussion? No, that this was never an issue in New York city, even though there've always been all types of gender non-conforming people who live their lives in a, in a multitude of different ways. And I want to make that very clear. That's never the issue. My issue is the mass gaslighting, the moral, the, the delusionally based moral superiority of these males. And then the intrusion and the intrusion on women's spaces women's thoughts and how them and their flying monkeys the little crony pick me mammies that enforce their ideology like these ex-friends that i was you know that i'm referencing these women uphold their ideology and bully other women and these people are fucking bullies like i i don't know if other people have noticed that one of the main um aspects of the quote-unquote gender movement especially on social media is that when they don't like somebody or like what they said they bully them they don't come, they don't, you know, come with any strong, valid, solidified points. They make up revisionist history and statistics and re envision, you know, medical studies and all types of stuff and just engage in mass gaslighting and bullying. That's their tactic and stuff. And that's how people in real life who support this movement, a lot of them act. Either they'll just completely start avoiding you and not talk to you at all and start acting funny towards you, or they'll become very hostile and angry towards you. It's weird and obsessive <laughs> but anyway so yeah I was in that group of friends and they didn't appreciate that I was not cowtown to the gender movement and that I no longer agreed with it because of those incidents that happened to me where I was almost violated basically so on top of having that traumatic situation happen to me and I was traumatized about it for weeks especially because I was dealing with a lot a lot of stress in my life at that time I was dealing with a lot of stuff so these People who I thought were my so-called friends, right? Um, this is where it kind of connects to mixed race identity. So these people that really support the the, the gender movement, um, I kind of got the sense after a certain time that I kind of like, they, like one of them just didn't really like me that much um, in general. And I think that the whole like gender thing was the straw that broke the camel's back for them. Like they really, they didn't like me, but they could just couldn't hide it anymore. But because they were a fake ass weak bitch, they stayed around me because it was convenient for them. Um, <laughs> and that's why you should never be friends with people who don't have what you have. Cause they will ha just hang on to you because it's convenient for them. Not cause they actually like you. But anyway, so this was around the height of the Cardi Nikki, um, you know, shoe fiasco and everything. And if you watch my channel, you know that I am fans of both of them. I'm supporters of both of them. Um, and I, I like both of them. And same thing at that time, uh, even when they were beefing, I never switched up or anything. And so when I met this girl, we were, well, well, the, the two of them that had the issue with me about the trans stuff, um, when I met them, we, they were like new friends. So they didn't know that I'd been supporting Nikki and Cardi for a long time. Like I've been supporting Cardi B since she was on Vine. That's how long I used to watch her. And after Vine shut down, I followed her to Instagram. And the first time I had ever heard about those tweets or seen them was when the whole Nikki situation happened. So when the beef first started, um, at first they, these two girls, they were acting like they were cool with me being friends with both of them. Like, 
and we all know how a lot of the barbs are um you know i am a barb i'm a huge nikki fan but i don't roll with the crazy shit and i that's how the majority of them are and they're like that in real life honestly I, i'm gonna be honest with you i've had multiple issues with other people who were like very serious barbs so even though i am a barb i don't really associate with the staying culture side of barbs um and the obsessive fans type i'm a rap hip-hop music fan not just a stan you know um so anyway they were stands they are not hip-hop heads they're not into lyrics they're not into who all the artists they're into they're into standing youtubers and Nicki minaj like very toxic people basically so anyway so we had all became friends and so when that whole situation happened they basically started pressuring me and being like well you basically need to pick like they were basically having an issue with me posting cardi like if she would do something and i would support it or i'd be listening to it they would say something like oh we don't want to listen to her like you i can't believe you're still listening to her like even after she did that like that's so disrespectful and of course they started bringing in the whole race thing and they were like yeah cardi b is racist and colorist and she doesn't like black women and this and that and everything and it was just it was it was a really weird situation because they kept trying to like get me to pick a side and I just couldn't understand why I was that serious. Like we were adults at this point. Like we were well past like 20, 19, 20, both of us. Like or, or all three of us. So I just thought it was so weird that they were like, you know, trying to pressure me to do that. And they were just always pressing up on the race issue and like, oh, like she's colorist and she doesn't support black women. And that's why I don't like her. And, you know, everybody was really pushing that narrative hard. And they were just and, you know, of course, like I'm a womanist feminist. I've always been like that. And so they would say little stuff like, oh, I just don't see how you could support her. Like she's so toxic for women and like she's not black. And she says the N word. She's so disrespectful and da da da. Meanwhile, one of my one of these two people was a very very racially ambiguous light-skinned dominican which i will say she was afro latina because i didn't know her family but i just found it so ironic that she was always like coming at cardi b's race and trying to take this high and mighty approach and being like oh i can't believe she says the n-word and i don't see how anybody su could support her like they would say little sly stuff like that like oh yeah like real barbs would never you know s switch up or like fuck with the ops and there's no playing both sides you know just like corny shit like, like they would make very passive comments and i thought i didn't think nothing of it because i didn't think it was that deep at the time but anyway yeah my one of my friends who was the racially ambiguous dominican girl i just thought it was so ironic that it's like how are you over here talking about cardi b who's also dominican just like you you saying she's not black and she's racist and she shouldn't be saying the n-word couldn't somebody say the same thing about you and this is why i also don't take what a lot of mixed people say seriously because people of african descent they exist in a state of hypocrisy it's always rules for thee but not rules for me they always have something to tell other people but they never have any hold they, they sell to the same standard or accountable and anyway they were always pressing the race issue really hard and everything and my whole point is just that like essentially they were trying to get me to pick a side between Nikki and Cardi and they were making it like a black girl versus Spanish girls thing and I just was like I will not pick a side <laughs> like I'm not going to choose Nikki over Cardi or anything because it's, it's not that serious not that deep and it's not about race and so eventually what ended up happening was that one of them basically ended up trying to like blow up my spot on social media and basically accuse me of being a Dominican colorist also um, I'm not Dominican, mind you. Um, and that that's not the first time that's happened to me either, where somebody's accused me of being the Dominican and then accused me of being colorist. And that's why I always talk about like the stereotype about Dominicans, because that's something that actually has affected me. <laughs> like, so anyway, um, she basically made that a, a social media post about that. And she had been being mad fake towards me, like I said. So I didn't really know that they were still mad at me about the whole like trans situation. And it was basically just being compiled with race and everything like that, especially because I was kind of dealing with racial problems at my job, too. And like, I didn't feel like they were supporting me. I feel like they were gaslighting me about a lot of it um, because I basically was experiencing colorism slash lightism. <laughs> um, that's a whole different other story time that I'm going to have to do soon but they were not being supportive of me um and I kind of was I wasn't saying that to them but I was talking about the situation and they were like really gaslighting me um and basically saying that that wouldn't happen and so anyway I'm just bringing up this point so yeah like I said she ended up like 
talking shit about me on her Instagram story. I'm just going to be honest with you and being like, oh, I can't believe somebody would support Cardi B. Like, you're a racist and you, you're colorist towards black women. If you support her, like, I can't fuck with you. Like, you're a hateful person. And basically just saying that I was hateful and that I was a colorist um, because I support Cardi B. And she had told a few other people that I was... um colorist also because I had told her she shouldn't get blue contacts and I stand on that bitch you would have looked dumb with blue contacts she was a like a chocolatey brown skin Trinidadian girl she would look dumb as fuck with blue contacts I don't care but anyway yeah she would constantly not constantly but she would always like she had all this animosity towards me and it started around the time with the whole trans thing that's when it really started to trigger I noticed it um and I had kind of low-key been like not pushing at her but I had been throwing little things out there to like see how she would like take it um and so when I especially when I saw how she was acting towards me uh when I was going through that microaggressive situation at my job when I was dealing with like with lightism slash colorism um I noticed how she was acting towards it and so anyway when she went on her Instagram story and basically was like yeah if you're some some colorist Dominican um I can't fuck with you because y- you're gonna support somebody like Cardi B or some shit I don't even remember what she said but that's basically what she said and everything and like so instead of coming to me she did this whole thing on social media and I did the same thing back to her except my insults were way worse because my insults were actually true <laughs> and my insults were based on merit and finances and character not just you trying to pretend that I'm Dominican I'm not Dominican I'm Cuban Bahamian and African American so you clearly were trying to push a certain narrative about me by saying that but anyway I'm bringing up this whole story um because and of course I confronted her about it we stopped being friends like I said I talked shit about her on my social media also that was the end of it. It was done from there. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm proud of the way I handled that or the stuff I said about her on social media. But yeah, I just, like I said, the stuff I said about her was actually true. So that's what actually matters. At the same time, they wanted me to also support the whole trans stuff also. And I just ran that crazy. It's like, okay, so you you don't feel like my pain that I was going through when I was getting essentially harassed at work for being the only like light skin slash, you know, mixed Latina girl, whatever you want to say in my work group, I was dealing with harassment. Um, and somebody going on a smear campaign about me, about me, I was dealing with that situation, but you want to couple that with, with saying that I'm the colorist one <laughs> because you don't like some stuff I said to me and because you've been harboring some anger and resentment towards me and you don't have any empathy for me, even though I'm your friend, but you have all this empathy for men in dresses. And I just found that really crazy, like that she... Um, yeah, she was really trying to bully me with the whole trans situation and trying to gaslight me and make it seem like I was the bad person for not wanting this individual in in the space with me. But at the same time, she was also trying to bully me out of supporting Cardi B and like, you know, trying to make me feel bad about myself, even though I had said more than once that I had no idea about the tweets. And of course, I didn't condone the tweets and didn't support them. But I had no idea about that. So it was like, why would I stop supporting somebody I've been supporting for a long time because of some shit that they said before when I like they, they had said like five years ago, like I can acknowledge that those comments were colorist and and tacky and I've said that before on my channel but I wasn't gonna just denounce her and I didn't understand why she cared so much that I liked both of them and honestly I'm more of a Nikki fan only because of her longevity and the sentimental value of her work that she's done throughout the years and I show mad more love to Nikki honestly and so that girl was still it was not good enough for that girl she just wanted to have an issue because she had an issue with me and she was just harboring resentment towards me but she wanted to be around me at the same time so I just found that, that that to be really interesting. It's like they see they can see mixing it. I mean, they can see transness as valid and as something to be highly respected. But they don't have that same respect for actual mixed people or actual other black women who deal with situations for being women biologically or for being mixed or for being, you know, whatever. Y'all don't have no empathy for that. But I'm supposed to empathy empathize with these men who are constantly co- crossing boundaries and getting ahead of themselves and being disrespectful and move with all this arrogance. Like 
they the whole even the vibe of the movement moves like a men's movement bullying belittling women um talking bad on people attacking people who they don't agree with the same way that the anti-feminist movement would act in the mid 2010s that is exactly how the trans movement acts how the how the female impersonators act and also how their flying monkeys women act and like I said, I have real life experiences with them. And it's like, if you felt like I was so racist and I was so colorist and I was so transphobic and so unbearable, why was you always trying to hang out with me? Why was you trying to be my friend for months? It, it only became a problem when I started having an issue with y'all and started confronting y'all about the funny behavior and asking if everything was okay. Now, all of a sudden, you don't want to say if everything's okay when I'm trying to have a conversation with you. But you want to be mad, microaggressive, passive aggressive on your social media and you want to put out a certain message about me, but you don't want to have a direct conversation about with me. But you feel like you're morally superior to, to me, even though you got to make up lies to make me look like a bad person. And I'm sorry, but I'm doing this video kind of as a therapeutic like session for myself, <laughs> because especially within like liberal social um, activism or you know, social sciences spaces, liberal spaces and things like that. I've just encountered so many women and I'm only specifically focusing on black women in this this instance because we're talking about the experiences in the the community of women of African descent. But I just have to be honest with you, I've experienced so many situations of other black women who portrayed themselves as being like advocates or socially conscious people who, no pun intended, rode the D's naïs <laughs> of these, um, you know, transforming biological males who are such huge advocates and supporters of them. But these women would have such a weird or nasty or just cold disposition towards me specifically. And it wouldn't be towards other black women. It wouldn't even be towards other women in general. It would literally just be towards me. Like, you know, or even I know at times even women like me. Like I have an example I'm going to bring up that's literally her this what girl who specifically explicitly would target light-skinned women but i've just seen this pattern so much of these specific women who portray themselves as being advocates for the trans movement especially amongst black women but this is true amongst non-black women also um but of course like i said i'm focusing on black women community now but so many of them that they portray themselves as being advocates for trans women quote unquote but they are so nasty towards other black women, specifically other black women that they in their twisted mind perceive as being more socially like acceptable or socially like seen as attractive than them. And I know that that sounds really arrogant or like kind of hot headed for me to say, but that's just what I've consistently noticed. So like this first example and like this girl honestly reminds me this girl that I'm about to talk about, she reminds me a lot of the Trinidadian ex-friend I had. Um, they literally had like the same phenotype, same like build. Like they were both like not overweight, but kind of like on the on the larger BMI side. Same like brown to dark skin tone, um, very West African phenotype. You know what I mean? Like, but so anyway, um, so I was in class with this girl. Um, and like I said, she was, she looked a lot like my ex friends, but anyway, so I was in class with this girl and she also was, um, in the same major as me, some type of like sociology or something major, um, social sciences. And so I tried to extend a few olive branches to her a few times to like, if to study or like, you know, to share materials and everything like that. And she just was never um, really receptive. Like um, I suggested we exchange numbers on WhatsApp. She wasn't really interested in doing that. Um, I'd asked her a few notes a few times. It wasn't really like she always kept it really short and sweet with me. She wasn't rude to me. But like I said, she just always kind of kept it short and sweet. But I noticed with everybody else in the class, like she was very warm, very talkative, very chatty. They immediately formed their, you know, study cliques. Um, it wasn't a huge class. So we were all kind of like. Uh, you know uh, inadequate with each other 
Um, but I just noticed like her energy with other people would be very different towards me after she would where she would keep it really short with me. And there was another um light skinned black girl in the class who was actually like a few tones lighter than me, but she was like overweight and had short hair. Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because it tracks with my <laughs> original thesis that I feel like a lot of these women they have something. They kind of have a, a sense of resentment towards women that they perceive as maybe having more privilege or more advantage in society. And so I feel like they kind of like they kind of have like a like a socialist Robin Hood <laughs> type of mentality where they're like, oh, I'm going to have an attitude with people that I perceive as being more privileged than me. But I'm going to be friends with all the like disadvantaged people. And it's also kind of an insecurity thing, too, because it's like if you genuinely like are humanist and like care about other people, what they have or how they physically look or their skin color, whatever, wouldn't matter to you. You would treat everybody equally or see everybody equally. You wouldn't feel like people who are less privileged or less advantaged are more whole or more valid um yeah so I'm not saying I'm perfect but it's just if I see a pattern of behaviors from you and that you acted funny towards the same similar type of people all the time and your rhetoric and your ideology even preaches about this y'all are constantly complaining about people who have quote-unquote privilege so clearly this is a, a mindset that a lot of y'all follow <laughs> so why am I not supposed to feel this way um, but anyway, so yeah, I had tried to extend multiple olive branches to the girl in my class and she was never really receptive, but I noticed her and the overweight light skin girl was starting to get real buddy, buddy. And I'm bringing that up because I'm trying to show that I'm not saying that, oh, she was, she's acting like this towards me cause I'm light skin or they're just hating on me cause I'm mixed and I'm light skin. Da, 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 da. I'm not saying that at all. But if you have people who already have a sense of bias against you, they're already going to come in, you know, not being open minded and going to act funny towards you. That's the feeling I'm saying. Um, and that's the feeling I got. And so, like, they will look at some light skinned women or some other black women as non threatening, even some other mixed women as non threatening for certain reasons. So, like I said, they were both kind of on the bigger side. I'm going to just be honest with you. They were more larger bodied women. So, I feel like she maybe probably felt like she could relate to that woman more and that she was less threatening than maybe somebody like me. Like, you know, I'm just gonna be honest with you, like, just by appearance, there are a lot of reasons why insecure people would not like me. And I'm not trying to sound arrogant, and that sounds really arrogant, but I'm just gonna be honest with you, like, I've been dealing with that my whole life. Like I said, I'm short, I'm cute, I'm very stereotypically feminine. People automatically think I'm going to, you know, think I'm better or be vain anyway. So they kind of project that onto me a lot. <laughs> Um, so that's why I also why I push back on these notions of, of privilege and things like that too, because a lot of times when people talk about privilege, they're really just talking about stereotypes and assumptions based on, uh, characters that we've created in our society, uh, based around people's, you know, character, uh, characteristics and attributes that we assign to them. Um, when people are way more complex, but anyway, <laughs> so, so yeah, so in this class that we had, the two, the light, the fat light skin girl and the brown skin light skin girl that were chubby, they both became buddy buddy, whatever. So then we also had a trans identified male, genetic male in our classroom, right? That you know lived their life as a woman, whatever. So of course she ran to go be friends with this person. Immediately was going out of her way to make them feel comfortable, adding them to the study group. Um, you know, automatically, like the minute they joined our class, three weeks late after it started, mind you, this person was never on top of their work, did not respect our female professor. Anyway, that's just a sidebar. They, they know that they're, they get accommodations all through society and they move, they move accordingly because they know that the society accommodates them. They, they know that they're not disadvantaged. They do not move like disadvantaged group of people. But anyway, so yeah, I noticed that she went out of her way to be chummy with all of those people, even with non-black people, went out of her way to be chummy with them, never extended that olive branch to me in the same way. And I just found that really interesting. And so anyway, I, I eventually I just kind of stopped extending it to her because I was like, whatever. Um, so then I started to kind of notice, like, um, like I've, I've said before in the channel, I'm multi-ethnic. And so I would make comments sometimes about being multi-ethnic or speak of both cultures and stuff. And I noticed when I would do that, she would sometimes say a little contrarian stuff or be like, you know, kind of like try to, um, I don't know, like 
she would always try to add on to what I was saying or like give another opinion on it or be like, well, I kind of think that da, 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 da. and I would just be like, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm open to friendly conversation, and everything like that. But I just noticed a consistent pattern like that. She would try to kind of be contrary and or kind of try to like, quote unquote, give nuance when I would speak on something. And it would be on a topic like about Latin American history. Like she was African American. It would be about something she would definitely have no idea about. And she would give a comment that was not even relevant to what I was saying. It it was like she was just trying to like add on to what I was saying like you know when you can tell when somebody's like trying to like kind of one up you in a intellectual sense in a classroom like if you're a teacher's pet and you've dealt with other teacher's pets you might know what I'm talking about <laughs> and it, it would just be clear like she didn't know what I was talking what she was talking about but I noticed it was because it was an ethnic studies class because that, that was my major so that's I would be talking about that and connecting that to my own experiences and she would like be trying to like disagree and it's like how are you disagreeing with my family history like <laughs> with what it says on my family's documents like how are you disagreeing with that but anyway so it would be stuff like that and so I just noticed like I just got a real like weird like disposition from her and like nothing ever like specifically happened but like the nail in the coffin for me when I really started to like kind of like dislike her as a person was because we had to do um uh, presentations it was like our end of the year after presentation every thing and everybody did it on a group of you know a group of people that we wanted to do it on and I actually did my project on uh, mixed race people in North and South America so when I be trying to tell y'all on here like I'm not just on here talking shit like I've actually done real research on this shit like <laughs> I actually be trying to speak from like what I I'm trying to put my my degree to the test I'm not doing doing it at work I work in a field that has nothing to do with my job <laughs> I mean, with nothing to do with what I went to school for. So if I can at least put it to work here, I'd love to be able to do that. <laughs> so that's what I try to do. But um, anyway, so I did my project on the way mixed people of African descent identify in not only Latin America, but North America as well. And this girl, I kid you not, she had her head up during everybody's presentation. Of course, when the trans identifying male presented, she was clapping and asking questions and being like, oh my God, I love your presentation. Da, da, da. Even though his whole presentation was literally a regurgitation of everything you see on the typical Instagram, Twitter, Wikipedia, wherever pages about that community. It's always the same recycled as talking points, just like with Colorism Inc. That's all he did was copy and paste stuff from Twitter. But anyway, so of course she was like, you know, giving, singing him his praises or whatever. So then when it's my turn to present, this bitch puts her head down and literally goes to sleep. She slept through my whole presentation didn't even clap for me nothing like she seemed like very irritated that I was even giving my presentation um you know she put her head down she was being extremely rude to me and like she went out of her way to be rude during my presentation like I kid you not I just thought that it was so um it was weird it didn't make any sense to me and I to this day don't know what her problem is and this is why I've been trying to say to y'all these people do not want people to identify as mixed they genuinely have an issue when people who are mixed with black identify as mixed like this and she was one of those people who pretended like oh I'm so anti one drop rule and the one drop rule it um equals elimination and blah 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 and like she would bullshit and everything like that but when she would have an actual real life mixed person in the flesh talking to her she didn't want to hear it and she didn't like it <laughs> she wants to be able to control and dominate the conversation so all i'm saying i'm that that's another example that i'm showing is like a person who has all this empathy all of this understanding all of this advocacy toward a group of people that literally biologically not only does not exist biologically but really did not even have any demographic influence until the last five years but you have afro mixed people who have been in this country forever we've constantly been disrespected never been properly categorized we get no respect disrespected by all groups of people turned on by our own community <laughs> we can't even get any support she can't even support me as another black woman you know, she even before she knew that I was um, multi ethnic or she knew anything about me, she was already acting funny towards me. She had already decided how she felt about me. And so once she saw that I wasn't a mixed person who's living in the closet and ashamed of myself, then she really had an issue with me and her whole attitude changed. I definitely noticed that she started to be a lot more overt about her shadiness and her like not interest in being around me or like being my friend right after I started to be more vocal about talking about being mixed or talking about like Hispanic culture and stuff like that. 
Um, so yeah, she was really weird. But anyway, about uh, a few months ago or so, I went back to my campus to have lunch with my mentor. And like I said, she's in the same department as me. So I actually ended up seeing her because she still works there. And um, I saw her and I was thinking about like waving to her. And I thought about it and I was like, nah, I'm not saying anything to her. Like, I remember how she acted in the class and I was like, nah, I'm not saying anything to her. And so I did it. And actually, I forgot to mention this, but I've actually seen her since like before that situation. Um, and after my presentation, I had seen her like at a black organization group, like outside of our school, like just randomly. And she had tried to act like she didn't know me or she didn't see me, even though I presented my name and everything. And she knows what's what college I went to too and she literally tried to act like she did not know me or see me and I had to kind of low-key be make an awkward moment about it because she was with some people and I was waving at her she tried to act like she didn't see me and I had to be like oh my gosh like wow um you must have seen right through me I said something passive where I had to basically embarrass her and then she was like oh my gosh hi like the bitch is just mad fake and like she reminds me a lot of my ex-friend and that's just what I found so interesting I'm like there's definitely a pathology to these male identified women who are obsessed with the trans movement and who go out of the words to accommodate these males but have this weird just I'm not gonna say hatred but they have this weird disposition of distrust and nastiness towards other black women that they think have a more of an advantage or are seen as more attractive or are more conventionally valued in the society in their opinion um and don't sit up here and talk about you're an advocate or you care about black lives or you care about other black women if you don't have love for all black women <laughs> if your love only extends to people who are monoracial and and pretending to be women then you don't really love women you love black men you're a black man worshiper just like most of y'all are and so just to wrap this video up i want to give my last example of this so this last example um happened a, f a few years ago like honestly even before either of those situations happened um it was one of the first situations where i really started to notice a uh, pathology not only amongst some brown skin and dark skin women but also amongst a lot of people who support this um female identify female impersonating movement and this is actually before any of the traumatic situations happened to me so at this time i you could say i still was kind of like a supporter of the movement so I didn't really have a negative perspective of it um but so I used to be on Twitter um like sporadically right after I graduated high school like a few years after that and so um I used to follow this influencer and I'm not gonna say her name because she's pretty popular um she's East African so you people might know her um she does a lot of different color hair colors and stuff I don't see her videos that much anymore but she has like a very baby doll face you might know who I'm talking about um but anyway like like I said she's an influencer so she's popular of course she's a very beautiful girl very cute always does her hair and makeup looks beautiful gets a lot of endorsements um very popular I would say one of the most prominent black um influencers at that time this was like over four or five years ago so anyway so um I used to follow her on Twitter and one of the reasons why I stopped following her is because like she would constantly be talking negatively about mixed and light-skinned women on Twitter like constantly all the time and like I'm not even talking about like little shady stuff like talking about celebrities like I'm talking about saying like straight up hateful shit like straight up saying like I don't like light-skinned women or I, I can't be friends with light-skinned women or fuck these light-skinned bitches like really like really nasty stuff and uh, this was like kind of early in my colorism ink like no like journey where I started to notice this stuff so it really caught me by surprise and like the only major thing that I can pull off the top of my head that I really really remember her saying was um apparently there was some discourse going on about the Bratz movie that had come out like in the early 2000s and so they were talking about how in the live action Bratz movie apparently they um cast this girl who is kind of like on the light brown side and she has like green eyes and so the influencer 
you know, retweeted the post and was like, yeah, this is why I hate light brights because they take everything like they can't let us have anything because, um, you know, Sasha was the only dark skinned doll and these stupid light brights have to come and take everything. And like she literally went on like a three week, I'm sorry, a three a three tweet tangent complaining about light skinned women saying that she hates light brights. She said this like three times in a tweet. Mind you, this is like a huge influencer. So they claim that they're so disadvantaged, they're so mistreated, they have so few allies, we're such the most powerful group, yet they feel so comfortable to get online and say all these unhinged things about us. And and so that they literally don't like an entire group of people. But then these are the same people who want to bully people because they don't support the tea movement because this same influencer is a huge supporter of tr so-called trans girlies like she would always be um staining um the racist nikita dragon so would my ex-friends also that's why i was saying those broads were fucking weird like they would stain all of these non-black people who would say the n-word or who were racist like these racist um white youtubers and tiktokers and stuff and first of all why are you in your 20s staining tiktokers and youtubers like grow up but anyway <laughs> um but then they will want to sit up here and have all of these high-ass standards for light-skinned women and want to be shaming me and cardi b but you hold but you had a different standard for non-black people like a lot of y'all have internalized hatred as well that's a, a huge part of this conversation that's not being talked about not only do you have internalized misogyny but you also have internalized anti-blackness because y'all will support non-black people who are problematic but you got a different standard for mixed people who you perceive as problematic very interesting but anyway um yeah so this influencer that what why i stopped supporting her was because she would be talking mad shit about light skin women on tiktok or i mean on twitter at this and i don't even think tiktok existed at this time but yeah she would always be saying all this hateful stuff and it was just so bizarre to me because i'm just like where is this coming from and i, I just always noticed how she was always reposting um trans women and saying how she's a huge supporter of trans women and this and this and that and i remember somebody had got mad at me on my social media one time because i had made a post called talking about how she's so hypocritical because she would be one of the main people saying that light skin and mixed women harm black women by erasing their image by taking black roles and all this bullshit and i was like how is how is they erasing black women for um light skin and mixed women to play roles of black women or as fucking dolls like all of this was because a light skin girl played sasha in the brats movie is fucking stupid but anyway how is how is light skinned women playing other black women erasure, but you calling a a man in a dress a woman? How is that not erasure? Like these bitches are stupid. I'm sorry. Like you're dumb as hell. Do not tell me that you care about erasure, but you're calling a black man a black woman. So what's more problematic? Claudia Jordan and Kamala Harris, who are biracial women calling themselves black women, or um uh, a man that was born Lorenzo calling himself Loretta? pretending to be a black woman and now they don't even talk about your high ass black femicide statistics or how black women are unalive in childbirth at record numbers ain't nobody even talking about that because you over here focusing the conversation on so-called trans black trans women which are really just black men have we not been talking about black men's plight for the last 70 years it's, it's so funny how these women do so many mental gymnastics and military mind games to constantly center black men back in the conversation like it's like they have an emergency to actually supporting black women <laughs> it's like they want to try to help they want to go all around the mulberry bush with their advocacy but they don't want to support or advocate for other mixed women they don't want to support and advocate for non-black women they don't even want to support or advocate for real actual black women but they want to sit up here and justify why they need to support all of these so-called trans women all these um problematic non-black people who pretend to be women that are also so-called female impersonators like <laughs> how, how dare you support be supporting nikita dragon but you trying to talk about how you hate light brights on social media like the, the 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 hypocrisy that these broads exist in never ceases to amaze me and that's another pattern that i've seen with a lot of these um black women that support the trans movement also a lot of them are heavily non-black identified which isn't necessarily bad but it is bad when you have when you ha you have a hateful attitude towards black women that look like you or from your community and you want to hold other black women or other women of african descent hispanic or whatever so to, to one standard and you want to act mad funny towards us 
but you want want to try to bully us and intimidate us into supporting black men's issues how is that any different than what mammies do when they try to intimidate black women into supporting you know black men's causes whether it be so-called police brutality or whatever it is male identified bird-brained dick dizzy phallus worshipers (laughs) like i'm sorry that's all that all of this is giving to me but anyways this was just my anecdotal little story time in connection to the post uh, made by Cla- Claudia Jordan in response to Kendall Jenner. Get in the comment section and let me know what y'all thought about this video and if you've been in similar situations or see my perspective in either of those situations as well. Thanks for all the support. Bye-bye.